So we had a, a wire antenna up for winter field day. And uh, I think we had limited success with the air cable. Uh, we needed a fishing line rather than a parachute. It, it was a learning experience. <laughs> <laughs> but it still worked mostly, right? So that was a example of a multi-band wire antenna. And I guess Jim would be here. I Going. Okay. All right. Okay, so the uh, in the old days I have it your radio. Your multiband antenna was a doublet or a zeppelin antenna or zeppelin. Um, when you see this, you're going to go, oh man, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, a, uh, a doublet, which is a, an effective one for most of us, that operate from 80 meters to about 10, is something like this. On 25 feet roughly as a dipole, center insulator, fed with open wire right to a tuner that has open wire. So this antenna can effectively be tuned on all bands. It's a little bit more efficient on the traditional amateur bands, but it's not impossible to use on the work light. Example 17 meters to uh, 12 meters, it's possible to use it. Um, the, the other part that makes this antenna special and very efficient is the way that it's fed. The open wire, the wider spacing that you can go, that's a little bit better, but you can get away with both 300 ohm twin lead, 450 ohm window line. I know you've seen. That you can order that, you can buy that stuff ready made. The bigger spacing you make it. So, what's going on is you still get standing waves on that open wire, it's just that the loss of coax doesn't come into play. Those standing waves can occur on that, on that twin lead, and it does not create. I guess I would call it pseudo loss because it looks like loss, but it really isn't. And uh, I've used one of the, I got one up now that's fed with two inch open line and an MFJ tuner. It tends on almost every single band. Pretty effective. The higher you can get it, the better off you are. <laughs> when I talk about a doublet, this one is 80 meters. Uh, I've seen a lot of them done at 120 feet. I had better luck at 125 because there's, you know, for reasons I'll show you in a minute, there were some bands I wanted to work that didn't work very really well. Um, a ZEP antenna is half of this one wire is missing. So you feed that down here, down at the bottom, say that wire's gone. Or you can feed it correct. Be sure you can feed it up here a little bit. That length becomes one half way. So basically, you take what you had to wire here and you move it up there. It's a big hole. You can do both sides, halfway length on each side. That's a double depth. And a double extended depth, 0.64 of a wavelength. That is 1,800 foot long on 160 meter. <laughs> yes, we were going to build it. <laughs> but for some reason, it just that didn't end up playing out. But uh, uh, these have a great ability to tune with a, a tuner. And it's a single antenna. If you've got the space, it works great. This is an example of a multi band, the first multi band antenna.
So this is what Jordan put up at where Phil said. I'm not sure that that was exactly how many feet he had, but it's pretty close. So you don't have to have a real serious ground. You know, say put a little tiny angle. What I've seen in recommendation is one tenth of the wavelength on the lowest frequency. So with 80 meters, that would be 10 or 12 feet. Uh, you can drive several ground rods in the ground in a circle and connect them with wire. That's an effective ground. And this antenna will work pretty good. What were you, about 20 foot high for the first? No, it was the first version was probably about 22 by the time it was at like 25. So, what that was doing was because of the vertical section, uh, it's 45 feet tall, it had a good vertical element. I've got one at home, it's about 20, and so I don't have as much of the vertical element, and I've got a longer horizontal element. And you can tell if it's coming in, uh, well, on 10 meters, you really can't tell because WA2OUV uses the horizontal beam, and he's on the vertical, and Dwight's on the vertical. And if I, I can completely lose Dwight on my 40 meter vertical and switch over to the wire I've got, and it's just S6, S7. So 10 meters is the whole area. The more horizontal length you have also will make it quieter. And uh, my argument on that one is my strictly tuned 40 meter vertical, I hear noise, I switch to the horizontal, the 160 meter, 160 foot long antenna, I hear the stations in South Africa and the noise level. Oh. Anybody out there is quiet. What makes this so good, because it doesn't just work on the low band, is uh, you guys have heard of a, what they call a DNA or vector network analyzer. This is a real simplified version of what that displays. So what you got, that 150 feet is a quarter wavelength at 1.5 meters. That's right in the AM. And the half wavelength, which is skinny, is up here. Your impedance is about 50, I would call it 1,500 kilohertz. It's 2,000 or more at a negative. And then it drops back down to 4.5. This, if you looked at it on an actual vector network analyzer, it makes humps and dips. This continues forever. You can take it clear into the gigahertz range. It looks like a big saucer. So, the antenna I have at home, I don't use a valve, I just connect it directly. And I still am hitting 80 meters, 40 meters, 30 meters. You can see the harmonics relate to one another. My tuner is quite happy with the high impedance. So if I needed to, I could put in 30 megahertz, 50 megahertz. Not a big deal. Uh, I do get some loss of coax. It's not as efficient. So these frequencies closer to a handbag are much more efficient. Um, Jordan's version, he has a 450 ohm, 450 ohm mount. So his speed point ends up here. And you see, because of the angles, it widens those spaces out. So he gets frequencies that tune a little easier than mine do. And maybe slightly more efficient. A little well, better if you run with coax. Right. Yeah, he's a little better with coax. Uh, but when you hear, you know, guys talking about a inverted L and why it works what it does, how it does what it does, this is the big. You can throw any frequencies you want to it, it'll match it to your transmitter. But there's going to be some spots where it's more efficient. Now, if I was looking at this, I would think because I want this to be more down into the lower, when it's fixed, I might want to make it a little bit lower. And it would 
touch 80, it would also bring 40 into a little bit closer resonance, and 30 slightly. So these are the reasons why you can put up an antenna, depending on the tuner a little bit. So uh, it's, it's actually that bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> and these are not pit balls. These are actual. This is a. I don't remember where I got this, but I think I've seen this picture in QSD uh, from the ARRL about how to build your own trap for a trap rifle or trap.
Chain link fence as the ground side. Well, that's what I'm trying right. to do. Is it just use it on the yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a big old long chain link fence. Yeah, yeah, just connect a wire from uh, the ballon on the negative side, and if it's not polarized, don't worry about it. And run it and just uh, what I would do is I'd strip yourself, go, go get like number four copper, like grounding wire, and um, use needle those pliers and wrap it around and put it on the ballon side, and then on the other side, wrap around that top rail. Like for a good two or three feet, and if you really want to get crazy with it, solder it at a couple of points. But go, otherwise, go just up, tape it. Go up one of the vertical holes of the chain fence, or whatever it is on top, or on the bottom. Yeah, you you want your ballon to be above the chain link fence. It's not super super required, but I always recommend doing it because that way you won't get common nodes. Well, my ballon's already set. It'll work. Yeah, it'll yeah. work. You're not coming out. Are you coming out in the same spot in the yard, or did you go up? Or? Well, I went out the first tree. Oh. Okay. And then uh, went underground with coax out there and get ready to put the coax to that with my 14 gauge wire to the positive side of the ballon. Negative side, I was going to run several uh, pieces of wire into the yard, and yeah. I'd have to go into the chain of fence right. to do it. I thought, well, why, why, why can't I just use the chain of fence? How far is the chain link fence away from the ballon? Oh, yeah, you're dead. It, with being that close, if you start getting uh, RFI issues or common mode weird, weird stuff going on, um, raise your ballon up. Because what happens is when your chain link fence is here and your ballon's here and your vertical radiator's here, part of that power coming right out of the vertical radiator is going into the ground and being absorbed. So if you don't have an issue, don't worry about it. But if you do, raise that ballon up. Okay, so right now I've got that part of my vertical. Yeah. Yeah, a couple feet's not going to be a big deal, but if you can get it above that chain link fence by six inches, then just let it go up into the tree that you have it, and then just pull it tight on the other side. You'll lose three, four feet, something like that. I mean, you don't have a ten foot high chain link fence, do you? Uh, it's, it's right. It's right about that high. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. standard four foot. Yeah, you're not. So you're not going to lose anything. I would lose about four foot of my. I would rather lose four feet. Of that, then have my vertical radiator below where my ground plane is. Okay, so I'm not ready to go here. Yeah. Okay. See, the interesting thing about your antenna is so you got a, a feed point where you hit it with your insulator on this side, and it goes to an insulator out here where it starts. It has the maximum amount of current and the minimum amount of voltage. And the maximum current is what radiates signal. The maximum voltage at the far end doesn't do much other than it helps the antenna tune. So that that radiated section is going to be down at the first 10 feet of the wire. Might as well do it now rather than hope for no issues. Okay. And then don't worry about running the radio out. Just run it like in those things and just yep. wrap it on the top, the top it, rail. It's some little split bolts. Uh -huh. Get a race brother. I've got them. And just wrap it around and tighten it down on that. Now, the one thing you're going to end up with is copper to galvanize or zinc. It, it's going to be a bit of a bimetallic connection. So you're going to end up every so often in the last couple of years, redoing the connection. Because it'll generate a oxidation in there that is isn't really kind to radio. It's, it's similar to having a diet. So they, you got to keep them clean. But I've never had any real big problem with that. Uh, and another cool thing, you've got a gate right by the house. Since you're past that, I would leave that section alone that goes close to the house. But connect all of it together. If there's a break in the chain link, connect it. Even just the gate. Go past the gate. Go past the gate. Okay. Keep it, keep it away from the house if you can. Yeah, it will be. But like at the corners where you know you have the two break copper, the two split bolts of copper, you know, another break, connect them together. It just makes it work better. 
Now, you know, like I said, you don't have to have much of a ground to convert a bell, but the more ground you have, the better. Well, I can put as much ground as I want to get a lot of Don't say that. 